In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the handbag using the fabric denim strips. And we will need two skeins of this denim yarn. It's called um, denims. And the color that I chose is called indigo dye. This is a cotton wool blend. It has 70% cotton and 30% wool. You will need two skeins of this yarn called denims. It does come in different colors. Um, I have another one here that I have purchased. This one is called, the color is Stonewashed. But for this one, I chose the color Indigo Dye. Um, I thought it went well with this color denim that I'm going to use for the bottom part of our handbag. So I'm going to go ahead and set these two aside because we won't need those until after we start the base because this is going to be the bottom base of the handbag starting off with the fabric strips, you will need two different sized crochet hooks to complete the project because we need a large crochet hook to crochet the fabric strips. I'm going to use a size Q, or 17, it's a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook and that's a plastic one. I usually get the plastic crochet hooks to work with fabric strips and this is an aluminum crochet hook that I'm going to use for when we get to the part of the handbag where I use these this um, yarn called denims which does feel very much like a soft um, fabric strip but it's very thin compared to the denim so I will be switching to a size J or 10 six millimeter crochet hook when we start to work with this so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for now and we're going to start off crocheting with the fabric strips. Now, I had talked about how to prep this in the previous tutorial, and I did mention that it's best to try to use a denim that has spandex or nylon. Um, you obviously do not want to use a pair of jeans that are still wearable, that you can donate to someone that... If you have a pair of jeans that have stains or, or holes um, or, f you know, really bad fraying at the bottom edges, or the broke a broken zipper or something like that. You definitely do not want to use a pair of jeans that are wearable. I donate those when they no longer fit anyone in my family. But for anything that has stains or just isn't in good enough condition to donate, but there's a lot of um, fabric still on the denim that can be used for projects, then that's when I always save those. So if there's a broken zipper or something that just um, makes them unusable, Believe me, there's lots and lots of fabric still that are, you know, useful for great projects. So that's what I always do. Um, I always reuse or recycle my fabrics whenever possible. All right, so to begin, now I did mention when you use the one with the spandex or nylon, you're going to have, you know, it's not going to fray so much, especially when you're cutting it. Now, when you're working with it, you are going to have some fraying because, of course, we cut this edge. And of course, there's no finished binding or edging, so it is going to fray when we work with it because we're going to be crocheting and working with it and manipulating this fabric as we crochet. But the good news about one that you choose with the nylon or spandex, and the more spandex or nylon content, the better, um, you're going to have less fraying. It will fray as we work along, but the good news about this is um, after you wash it several times, the fraying will minimize and eventually will have almost no fraying at all. If you use the regular type of denim that's 100% cotton without a cotton blend of nylon or spandex, you're going to get a lot of fraying. So that's why you want to choose this. So when I say it doesn't fray, I mean technically you will get some fraying. I always, it just means to me because I say no fraying because eventually after working with it and washing it two, like, two or three times, that minimizes and the fraying kind of stops. So that's why I recommend this for unit you know, projects. Unless you are going for the type of look that has a lot of fraying, then of course choose the other denim. But for this one I chose this type of denim. Alright, so to begin we're going to start off with a slip knot. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my size Q or 15.75 millimeter crochet hook to begin. And you don't want to make this one too tight because you want to be able to get into that stitch. Now, when you are working with this denim, 
in crocheting it's going to be the first round the first chain in the first round is going to be the hardest one after that it gets easier to work with um, I don't know if you've ever made rugs but it's the same way when you first start it off until you get to that second or third round it becomes easier and easier to work in the stitches so you definitely don't want to start off too tight but you want to keep your tension you know pretty much um, consistent so let's go ahead and begin let's start off with eight chains three and you want to stretch it a little bit here and there because it is denim three no four five six seven and eight so there's our eight chains to begin so now what we're going to do is we are going to skip the first chain and begin working in the second chain from the hook. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a single crochet into that first chain. We skip that first one. And then, it's our single crochet. And you don't want to do these too, too tight, but you want to try to keep your tension, you know, as consistent as you can. It's probably not as easy to do with a, a, a thick denim like this than it would be with yarn, of course. Okay, so now the next stitch, we'll do a single crochet. And we're going to do a single crochet all along this chain until we get to this last stitch. Okay? So let's As you can see, I'm here at the last chain now. So this one, I am going to do a single crochet. Okay, and then we're gonna be turning the corner here and working along the bottom part of the stitches, which was the bottom of the chain stitches. So we're just gonna work all the way around. So, of course, we're gonna need another single crochet into that stitch. So we can turn the corner here. Okay, so now we're going to need one more single crochet into that stitch. So essentially you're having three single crochets into that stitch. Now you want to work that tail, hold it along your work as you work the stitches. That way you won't have to weave them in later. You can work them right into your work. Along this row here, we're going to be working in rounds technically. We're going to be working in rounds. So now you want to find the next stitch. And we're going to do a single crochet. Just one single crochet into the stitch. Okay, and then the next stitch, one single crochet. And you just want to kind of stretch it as you work a little bit. Like I said, it is a little bit tricky to work with denim because it is very thick um, compared to yarn. But it's definitely going to look very nice when it's done. Okay, then go ahead and insert your hook into the next stitch and do one single crochet. Kind of stretch it as you go a little bit. Alright, we're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch. And that's where we join the two pieces of the two strands of fabric. Just want to work that in. And I try to hide those in between stitches whenever possible. So you can always kind of tuck those in later. Okay, so now this is one more stitch before we kind of churn this edge here. Okay, right here. So we're going to do a single crochet. Okay, so now, let's do one more single crochet into this stitch. And then 
here's another stitch right here. You can kind of tell when you turn in the corner when you need to do another um, two stitches, basically. So we're going to have to do two stitches into this because we're going to be turning the corner. Because so you can see if we just did one, it would just curl on you. So you can kind of tell when you need to add it. I mean, if you ever made rugs, it's kind of like you can tell when you need to have an extra stitch. You kind of want to mirror what you do on the other side, though, too. Now, that was one, so I'm going to do a second single crochet. And now you can see we're just going to keep working in the round. Or technically, this is going to be an oval shape. All right, so now we're going to do one single crochet in these stitches here. And then when we get to this one, I'll show you what we're going to do. So just go ahead and do your single crochets. single crochet, one into this one, a little stretch here and there, make sure, do a single crochet into the next stitch, and we're going to do a single crochet into this one, single crochet, and then single crochet into this one. Okay, and we're basically, this is our second round at this point. And as you do more rounds, it gets easier to work with this thicker denim. So, so the first row of chains in the first round, you just want to make sure that you don't do your stitches too tightly. So you can see this is like that top of that corner there. So I'm going to put two single crochets into this one. As you can see, it's turning the corner, so that's going to be perfect. We'll put two into that. Okay, and then this is the next stitch right here. It can be a little tricky. But you just kind of have to see how it is. It, when it, you know, obviously, um, if it starts to curl up, then you know you need the two stitches, and that's only at the edges here, not on these straight edges. You don't want to add extra stitches. Okay, so here is the next stitch. I'm going to do a single crochet. And you can tell, since this is a corner we want to turn, you do need a second one. So these two, we did two single crochets into them as we're turning the corner. You see what I mean? So that gets that rounded edge. So these two stitches had two single crochets each, and that rounded out perfectly. So now we're here, and this is the straight edge. So up to this point, we're going to do single crochets, and then we're going to need to round this out by adding two stitches into each of these two. Does that make sense? So we're going to do a single crochet until we get to the corners and we're going to do two single crochets into that stitch, two single crochets to go around again. So it's pretty easy. All right. All right, so let's do a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm just going to stretch it to make sure it's laying flat still. That's the main thing, because if you do it too tight, then, you know, when you stretch it, it'll start to curl out. So that's why you want to make sure you don't do it too tight. Okay, do a single crochet into this next stitch. Single crochet into the next one. And then single crochet into this one. All right, so that is the end of the straight edge, and you can see now we're turning the corner. Okay, so into this stitch. So basically, you can see we have two rounds now. So that completes the two, that's technically the second round. So if you were done and you weren't going to do any more rounds, you would just do a slip stitch here, and that would be your beginning base, okay, the bottom of your handbag. I'm going to do another round. So now I'm not going to join with the slip stitch here. I'm going to continue to go around the corner. So I am going to do two single crochets here. And then right in this middle one, just need the one. And then I'm going to do two single crochets into this one. Okay. See that now? Stretch it a little bit, and you can see still laying flat. And then 
Next stitch, one single crochet because we are at a straight edge now. So we want to make sure we don't increase on the straight edges. So we're just going to do one single crochet into these. Go ahead and single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next one. One single crochet into the next stitch. And then one single crochet into this stitch. And now you can see I just ran out of fabric. So I'm going to have to go ahead and get another strand to attach. And that will be a good review of um, connecting the two pieces together. I'll show you that as well. All right, I will be right back. I'm going to put it on pause while I go ahead and get some more fabric strips for my denim. Okay, so I have my next strand of fabric that I need to connect. I'm going to fold this down. I'm going to cut a little ways down, not all the way down. So now you have this little hole opening here. You're going to do the same thing on this one. You want to fold it down a little bit. And then cut down the center. But you don't want to cut all the way down because you want to make sure it stays connected. So now you have your two pieces. You just want to put that one right on top. Line up the holes there. And then we're going to take the other end of this strand and feed it right through and pull it right through until it ends. Just keep pulling. All right, so now we're almost here at the end. I'm just going to keep pulling here. Just, and that one's going to come right through. All right, then you can see you have your two pieces there. Just give it a tug. To connect, and there you have your two strands connected. Okay, so we're going to keep working here. Now we're here at this corner. We're going to be turning here. Okay, so we're going to do two single crochets here. The corner. Two single crochets into that same stitch. Okay, and then And see that center piece we're just gonna that center stitch we're just gonna do one single crochet into that one and then we're gonna do two single crochets into this one turning the corner here all right so you can see where this is sticking out that's where we connected the two pieces you can always feed that in and tuck it into a stitch later on all right now just gonna keep going we're gonna do single crochets one single crochet into each stitch. This is finishing round three. Since we're on a straightaway here, straight edge, not turning the corner, we're just going to do single crochets. One single crochet into each stitch. So we're just going to do one single crochet into this one. One single crochet into the next stitch. Okay, I'm just going to stretch it to make sure it's still laying flat and not curling up on me. If you find that it starts to curl up, that means you did your stitches too tightly. So you just want to make sure that you do not, and you want to stop every so often and kind of stretch it out and make sure it's laying flat and not curling. If it's curling up everywhere, that means you're doing your stitches a little too tight. And at the edges, you definitely, if it's curling up like that, that means you might have forgot to put the two stitches in the corner. And you, okay, so now here, I'm going to do a single crochet. And then, since we're not going to do any more rounds, I'm just going to go ahead and end with a slip stitch right into this one right there. Okay. And then we'll just be tucking this um, end piece into there somewhere. We'll, we'll um, weave it into our work. Okay, so that completes the bottom base of our handbag. So now that we have our base done, it is time to switch over to this denim's yarn. Okay, so now that we're done with the bottom part of the handbag, I am going to be switching to a size J or 10 
six millimeter crochet hook. Okay, and this um, skein of yarn does have a center pull on it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make a slip knot. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the yarn into one of these stitches here near the corner. And I'm going to attach it with a slip stitch. Okay, so now you can see these stitches are pretty big. So we're going to want to do three stitches into every single stitch since these are such a since these stitches are so large. Okay, so we're going to chain one. And we're going to do three single crochets into this first stitch. Okay, and then three single crochets into the next one. Okay, three single crochets into the next stitch. Okay, and then we're just going to continue all the way around doing three single crochets into every single stitch. When we get to the corners, we're not going to do anything differently. We're just going to put three single crochets into every single stitch until we get back to here and then we'll just connect with the slip stitch. So I'll go ahead and put the video on pause while I do three single crochets into every single stitch. And I'll meet you back here once I have that done. Okay, so I'm back. I finished doing three single crochets into every single stitch around and I'm going to join with the slip stitch to that first single crochet we did when we began the round. So now I'm going to do a double crochet into every single stitch around for this round. So we're going to start off with chain three. One, two, three, and then do a double crochet into the next stitch. And then one double crochet into the next one. And then you're just going to continue working your way all the way around and do one double crochet into every single stitch. And then when you get back here, you're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to work one double crochet in every single stitch. I'll go ahead and put the video on pause, and when I'm done, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I just finished my last double crochet of this round. I'm ready to begin. I'm ready to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that we did when we, when we began the round. So now, for this round, we are going to be working with front posts and back posts double crochets. If you are not familiar with the back post and front post double crochet, I did a tutorial previously where I showed you how to do the back post and front post double crochets. If you would like to see that tutorial before you begin this project, um, I will leave a link down below in the description box that will bring you directly to that tutorial. I will also place an iCard in the corner where you can click on that and that will bring you directly to the tutorial where I show you how to do the back post and front post double crochet. Alright, so let's go ahead and begin this round. You want to start off with a chain three two, three. Okay, so we're going to be working around the post of the stitches rather than into the top of the stitches. So we're going to begin the next stitch with a front post double crochet. So you want to do yarn over, you want to insert the hook behind the post because you want that post to be at the front of your hook and you want the post to pop out at the front of your work. So now go ahead and do yarn over, pull that through until you have your two loops until you have your three loops, yarn over and complete your double crochet. Alright, in the next stitch we're going to do a back post double crochet. So you want to do the yarn over and you want to start your hook from the back of the work. Put the hook over that post. So now you can see that the post is behind the crochet hook and it's popping out at the back of your work. So go ahead and do your double crochet now as you normally would. Okay, in the next stitch, we're going to do a front post double crochet. So 
So the, we want to insert the hook behind the post so that it pops out at the front of the work. And then you do your double crochet. And then we're going to do a back post double crochet into the next stitch. So now you can see that the hook is in front of the post and the post is popping out at the back of the work. So go ahead and do your double crochet now. So you can see what we're doing. We're alternating between front post double crochet, then a back post, then a front post and a back post. So the next one will be a front post and then a back post and I'm sure you can guess the next one will be a front then back and you're going to do that all the way around. So let's do a few more together. All right. So we just did a back post double crochet, so this next one is a front post double crochet. Next stitch, back post double crochet. And then since we did a back post, we're going to do a front post in the next one. And we're just going to do that all the way around, just alternate. We're going to do a back post and a front post, back post, front post, and just do that all the way around. So I'll go ahead and continue working my front post and back post double crochets. And when I'm ready to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I just finished my last front post double crochet of this round. I am ready to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three we did when we first began the round. So I want to join with that slip stitch here. Okay, so we're going to continue working front post and back post all the way around for this round as well. And as a matter of fact, we're going to do that for seven more rounds. So this round that we just finished was the front post and back post double crochet. We're going to do seven more rounds exactly the same. So we'll have a total of eight rounds of the front post and back post double crochet. So to begin, let me go ahead and just show you again how we're going to do the next seven rounds and they'll be exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to start off with a chain three whenever we begin a new round. And that's going to count as our first stitch. So the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. Because you can see here in the previous round we did a front post double crochet. So we're going to do a front post double crochet in this round and for the next seven rounds as well. And then the next round, you can see we did a back post double crochet in the previous round, so we want to do a back post double crochet here. The next one, we did a front post double crochet in the previous round, so we're going to do a front post double crochet in this round and the next seven rounds as well. So the next one, you can see we did a back post double crochet, so let's go ahead and do a back post double crochet in this round. So you can see everywhere that we do did a front post double crochet in the previous round, we're going to do a front post double crochet in this round. Everywhere that we did a back post double crochet in the previous round, we're going to do a back post double crochet in this round. So that is what we're going to do for the next seven rounds. So let me just do a couple more stitches with you. This was a front post double crochet, so we're going to do a front post double crochet in this round. Here's the back post double crochet from the previous round, so we're going to do a back post double crochet in this round. And we're just going to continue all the way around again, join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three, and then you're going to do, after you finish this round, do six more rounds like this. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working around. I'm going to do seven more rounds of the back post and front post double crochets, and when I'm done with the seven rounds, I'll meet you back here. So you can see we already finished one, so when you're done, you'll technically have eight rounds of the front post and back post double crochet. Okay, so I'm going to work my next seven rounds and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm back. While I had the camera on pause, I continue to work seven more rounds of the front post and back post double crochets. And we had previously done a round of the front post and back post double crochets. So now you should have eight rounds of front post and back post double crochets. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, I just need to join with a slip stitch to the top of that chain three that we did when we begin this last round. Okay, so okay, so now if you want your handbag to be, you know, a little bit bigger, you can definitely continue to repeat these rounds where we did the front post and back post double crochet. We did eight rounds. 
but you, if you want to do more rounds, you can, so you can have it as long as you like. I mean, you can even make this into a tote bag as opposed to a small handbag. So either way, um, you could just keep going. And for this, I'm going to make a small handbag. Okay, so now for this round, we're going to do um, half double crochets all the way around. And we're not going to work in the top of the stitches. We're going to be working in the spaces right underneath the stitch. So these spaces in between the posts, basically. I think it looks nicer that way. So let's go ahead and um, start off with a chain two. And then in that first space right underneath that next stitch, because we're going to work in the spaces around the post, we're going to go ahead and do a half double crochet. And then you find the next space right underneath the stitch, do a half double crochet. Underneath the next stitch, half double crochet. And then just do a half double crochet all the way around. And instead of working in the stitches, you're going to be basically working in the space right underneath the stitch. So instead of going into the stitch, work right underneath into that space and do your half double crochet. And we're going to do that all the way around. So we're just going to do this round will be all half double crochets. And when you're ready to join with a slip stitch, I'll meet you back here. So I'll have the video on pause while I do this round of half double crochets. So while I had the video on pause, I continued this round. I did a round of half double crochets. And now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to that first chain two that we did right at the top there. So now we're going to do just one round of single crochets. So chain one, and then do a single crochet, and then I'll do a single crochet into every single stitch around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on pause while I continue this round with a single crochet into every single stitch. So while I had the camera on pause, I worked a row of single crochets and joined with a slip stitch. Okay, um, but I am going to use the top band of this for the top of our handbag. And then these, you want to save the inseams um, for this project, and you can make lots of other projects with them. So you always want to save any parts of the denim you know, the pockets, anything else. So you need two of these inseams. These are the, like the inseams of the pant leg. So I have two of those. And that's what you're going to need to finish up this handbag. And of course, the denim yarn. So what we're going to do for this round is we're going to be doing some treble crochets. Okay, so we're going to start off with a chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and the first four chains will count as a treble crochet in that chain one. Um, that fifth chain is going to be a chain one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to skip this next stitch. We're going to do a treble crochet into the one after that. So you're going to wrap your yarn two times and start the hook into the stitch. Pull up a loop. You'll have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the first two, even the last three on. Yarn over, pull two off. Yarn over in the last two. Okay, so that's your treble crochet. And if you have trouble with the treble crochet or not sure how to do it, I do have a tutorial that you can um, look at if you need help with the treble crochet. Okay, so then do a chain one. We're going to skip this stitch, and we're going to do a treble crochet into the next one. Okay, and then chain one, and we're going to do another, we're going to skip this stitch and do a treble crochet into the next stitch. Okay, chain one, skip this stitch, do a treble crochet into this one, the next one after that. And you're just going to do that all the way around. You're going to do treble crochets, chain one, and treble crochet, skipping a stitch in between each treble crochet. Okay? So let's continue all the way around. I'll go ahead and put the camera on pause, and when I finish this round, I'll meet you back here. So while I had the video on pause, I went ahead and did the treble crochets with a chain one in between each treble crochet, skipping a stitch in between each treble crochet. And I'm going to join with the slip stitch to that fourth chain, because we did five chains. The fourth first four chains counts as the treble crochet and the fifth chain counts as that chain one so we're going to insert it into the fourth chain and join with a slip stitch all right and then we can cut our yarn and fasten off at this point 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then all we need to do is um, weave in our tails at the end. You can stop and do that now if you want, or, you know, just do it at the end. So now, okay, so here's that pair of jeans. What we're going to be doing is we're just going to cut right here all the way around because we want that top part of the waistline here. We just want the top part of the where the waist is, where the belt where the belt loops are. So we're just going to cut right underneath all the way around. I'll show you what I mean. So we're just going to cut right here. And like these these pair of jeans had rips and stains, so they were no longer useful or couldn't donate them to anybody. But it still had a lot of denim on there and the to use for projects. So I'm going to use this here. So we're just going to cut all along here. Oh, I'm going to have to cut underneath the belt loop because I don't want to ruin that. Just cut all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera on pause while I do that. And then when I have that done, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have the... Okay, so I cut out the part where the belt loops are. And then you can just unbutton that button so that it's one continuous piece. And then what we're gonna do here, okay, is we are going to weave this in and out of those chain one spaces. So we're gonna go ahead and just insert it through that space between the two treble crochets. And we're just gonna weave it in and out. So basically you wanna find the center, okay? So let's go ahead and find the center of our handbag. And that's an easy way to do this really is um, can go ahead and lay it flat. And you see how we have these ridges here where we did the back post and front post double crochets. You can just kind of count in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the middle one. I'm going to find the center treble crochet here and the coordinating one on the back. And you can double check by counting how many treble stitches you have before that hook. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 treble crochets there. And then I'll count these ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Perfect. So that's center. And if you may find that maybe you have um, some extra stitches or not as many stitches. And that's fine because you may have just skipped one or added a stitch. And that's perfectly fine as long as it still looks good. So just find the center one like I did. And then that's where you're going to have the back here starting here. So you want to, let's take that out now. And we're going to start weaving from the back because we want it to kind of be centered there. And we're going to pull it through the two treble crochets in that space there, okay, and then we're just going to weave it, and then we're going to come back through these, this um, space here, weave it through, and you want to make sure the belt loops are going to be on the outside, okay, and then we want, so that belt loop is over the post, so now we want to weave it where that's going to be on top, so we're going to come back up here, and weave it through. So we're just alternating over, under, over, under. Okay? Then I'm going to weave this one to the next space. Just like that. So you can see the belt loops on the outside still. So we just want to keep going over, under, over, under. You know, up through the space there and then back down through the space, the chain one spaces, all the way around. Okay, and then this side you would start, you know, over here. This one was um, over under, so this is going to come up through here. Be careful not to get that little buckle there stuck. <laughs> okay, back through that chain one space between the two treble crochets. That's how you're weaving them in and out. Okay, then we're going to come back 
through the chain one space between the two treble crochets again. Come back through. Oop, that's the next space right there. You can always fix it if you miss the spot. <laughs> you can always double check. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that. So I'll keep doing that and then basically when you get to this point, you stop. So you just weave them both here until you meet in the center here. So I'll go ahead and put the video on pause while I continue to weave in and out through the chain one spaces in between the treble crochets. So while I had the video on pause, I continue to weave the denim in and out through the treble crochets. So that's what it looks like when it's done, and it looks really, really cute. Now, if you find that the um, part that you have is too long, you can either continue to weave it through the back like I did, or you can actually cut it down in the back part and then sew it to shorten it. So either way it works. I just found that it was a little too long, so I just tucked it back under and continued to weave it through the back, so that way it fit perfect. So now... This button is not really going to be functional. You're not going to be opening and closing that. So I just folded that flap underneath that. Kind of weaved it in. I'll show you what I mean. Just weaved it right under that treble crochet. And I'll be putting like a little flower that I made with a little button or something in the center right over it to cover it. And that will look really, really cute. Um, so you can just make a little flower with the same denim yarn that we use for this to make a little cover to cover that button and it'll look adorable. Okay, so now finishing touches. Um, I'm going to be putting a pocket right on the center as well from the denim. You'll just sew it right on. And now we need to learn how to make the handles. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to do that. So this is what it looks like so far. So let's go ahead and work on the handles next. Okay, so for the handles, we're going to actually do those separate, and then we'll attach them. Okay, so for the handles, this is what we're going to do. Let me go ahead and set this aside. Okay, so I'm going to make a slip knot. And I'm just going to make a chain. We have these inseams. These are the hems that were the inseams. So we want to make sure that this is long enough because we're going to make we're going to be weaving this in and out of the handle as well so we need to make sure that the chain is at least as long as this so I'm going to measure this centimeters. I need to measure in inches. Alright, so let me go ahead and measure. Okay, so this is about 23 inches and I want to make sure my second one is the same length. Um, if it's a little shorter then you want to make it the chain, you know, according to the shorter piece that you have. Okay, so this one is about 22 and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and make my chain 22 inches. Okay. So because everyone's tension is different, um, we don't really have to count our chains. So let's just go ahead and continue to make chain stitches until the handle is as long as you want. In this case, I'm going to chain until I have 22 inches in length. I'm using the same size crochet hook. This is the size J10 6 millimeter crochet hook. And you know, if you don't have a tape measure or a ruler, then you don't have to worry because then you could just take the inseam and just chain it until it's about that length, which is, you know, just as easy to do as well. Up here and see if it measures long enough now. Okay, 
So I have my little inseam. I'm going to make sure it's as long as that. Okay, it's actually a little bit longer, so I need to undo a couple of those stitches. <laughs> All right, let me check again. And don't, you know, you don't want to stretch your chain. You kind of just want to... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and measure here. Okay, so that is the right length now. So that's perfect. So that is my chain. Or you can measure it, like I said. I'm just going to go by the, the length of the inseam because that's what we're going to be weaving in and out of this handle. So you want to make sure that both inseams are the same length. If not, you can match them up. And just, as you can see, this one's just a little bit longer, so I could just trim that to make them the same length. And before I finish, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that my chain is right here. All right, perfect. And you're going to need to do this twice, the same thing for one for each handle. So I'm going to go ahead and show you now what we're going to do. Now that we have our chains, we're going to do the next round. So we're going to skip the first three chains and work into that fourth one and do a double crochet. And then chain one, skip a chain, and then do a double crochet into the next one. Chain one, skip that next chain, do a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next chain, do a double crochet into the next one. Okay, and then chain one. And we're going to do a double crochet. We're going to skip the next chain and do a double crochet in the next one. Chain one, skip the next chain and do a double crochet into the next chain after skipping one. Chain one, skip the next chain and do a double crochet in the chain after the one you skip. And you're going to do that for the rest of the row. So just do double crochets, the chain one in between each double crochet, skipping a chain in between each double crochet and do that all the way to the end. Okay, and when um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the video on pause while I do that, and I'm actually going to make a second one. So, you, so you do the same thing, just repeat what we're doing here, and make two of them. So once um, I have two of them made, I'll meet you back here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the video on pause while I go ahead and finish. Okay, okay so while I had the video on pause I finished the one handle and I fi just finished my second one and I'm ready to cut off the yarn to fasten off so I'm gonna pull that through alright so I have my two handles now so what we want to do is we're gonna take those inseams and we're gonna just weave them in and out of those chain one spaces alright so I'm not gonna begin with that first one I'm gonna start here and I'm going to start with it going up that way and just weave it back and forth and back down okay I want to make sure that this part of the seam is showing it looks nicer than the back part so you're just going to keep weaving that in and out of those chain one spaces that one was over so I'm going to pull that so I'm going to pull that through the, I'm going to push that through that chain one space and then back down the chain one space between the two double crochets and just keep doing that until you get to the end. So we've been in and out of the chain one spaces. Oops, I'm going to make sure we turn it the right way, it's not twisting on me. Okay, so you just continue to do that. Just weave it in and out of the chain one spaces until you get all the way across to the end. And then do that with the second handle. Just keep weaving it through the chain one spaces. Okay, so I'll put the video on pause while I do that. And when I'm done, I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm back. I had the video on pause. So now I'm just continuing. I finished the first one. 
Now I'm just finishing up the second one. I just thought I'd show you a little bit more of how I'm weaving it in and out of the chain one spaces in between the double crochets and I'm going to do that all the way through till I get to the end and you obviously want to make sure that your last one that you weave is going to be underneath so it'll be like that instead of coming back through that hole you want it to be under so technically you're not going to weave it through that last one and I did the same thing on this one here okay so now if your um, denim is just a little too long that's fine you can always trim it but it's better to have it a little bit too long and to come up short and then you can just stretch it and there are the two handles and I think it looks just adorable with the denim woven in between it really um, complements the bag very nicely so now all we need to do is attach the handles so you can do that um, by sewing them on like that and do that on the front part and then the same thing on the back and sew them on and if you, with these um, denim that you just wove through the denim inseams you can just give it a couple of stitches so it doesn't shift around and move or you know come undone after you wove it in if you do not like to sew I guess you could also use some hot glue as well or fabric glue but I would give it a stitch or two so that way the denim doesn't move on you trim it if you need to if it's too long and like I said just stitch it right to these here then attach the handles to your handbag and I would just attach it by right here find the center and then just go over the spaces and just basically put them right there and then you can sew it from here to those that chain two space that you're on there like that same thing with this one and then you have your handbag and then we'll do the finishing touches um, after I do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on a little pocket right there which will be perfect if you want to put your little phone in there or anything um, that you need quickly to grab that you don't want to put inside the handbag and then just make a little crocheted flower or any size crochet flower you want put it right over that little buckle there and how cute does that look okay so I'm gonna put the camera on pause while I sew the pocket on in the little flower and my handles and I will show you what the completed project looks like so while I had the video on pause I went ahead and sewed on the pocket sewed on the little flower here and I sewed on my handles for my handbag and I think it looks just adorable can't really see the whole handbag in the camera here um, so let me try to show you different angles. Okay, so here's the handbag, and then there's the handles here. Looks really, really cute. So it's long enough to actually put over your shoulder. Okay, so for my handbag, I made the handles long enough to put over my shoulder. Because sometimes, you know, I don't always want to carry my handbag like this, or you hang it over your arm. But, you know, I do like to have it where I can throw it over my shoulder whenever I want to. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial where I showed you how to make this adorable denim handbag. I absolutely love the way it came out. I think it's super cute, and it's just adorable. And it's going to go with so many of my um, outfits because denim goes with everything. So I want to thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed the tutorial, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope that you will subscribe so you won't miss any of my future tutorials.